Thank you, everybody. I am George Quercha. I am director of research of Tactel. That is one producer of ultra high performance concrete panels for the architectural market. I want to show you a little bit of introduction that you probably already you know about the, some of the definition of ultra high performance concrete. What are the classification of architectural USPC in this case? Some of the properties. What are the reference standard or the building code that you can use for design facade using ultra high performance concrete? I'm going to show you only one case study and some of the conclusion that is based on this uh, work. Definition of UHPC. If you attend this morning uh, our session of this uh, fiber reinforced symposium, this is a real controversy about the definition exactly. In this case, this is one of the, my, my definition that I say is a hybrid between the European school and the American school. And then we say that it's a hydraulic cement based material that have at least a 50 days a compressive strain of 120. When it's reinforced with fiber, they are not metallic. And 150 when you reinforce with metallic fiber. And everybody knows that it's working with USPC that you don't use coarse aggregate. You normally limit your aggregate between two to four millimeters. Or some people in the world, they are starting to do USPC with higher aggregate size. You use pozzolani materials in general. Silica film is the most used. You can use another alternative supplementary cementitious material, like a fly ash, metacaurin, et cetera. You normally use high content of fibers. Normally, you, you, you hear all day 2% or 3.5%, or over less if you use some organic fibers. Lower water to body radio, normally 0.3. Formally, 0.25. It depends on the application that you want for the USPC. And again, they use a admixture that is very important for the workability and the very low water to binary ready that you use. I'm going to introduce another concept. I'm going to show you that our product is a hybrid product. It's not really a formally ultra high performance concrete. We use also te uh, a textile reinforced concrete. That is mainly a mesh made of alkali resistant glass. And why we use this? Because this can solve the problem of the and it's dropping the material with the fiber alignment in the, in the material. Everybody here that is casting USPC or uh, another kind of fiber reinforced material, you know with, with the flow, the fibers align. And this can give you a lot of anisotropy when you are testing the, the property of the material. You are going to show you also one of the reasons, at least for the facade application, is that the mesh increase your anchor capacity. When you have a point style anchor, when you are hanging the material in the wall, it's increasing the load for failure of that anchor. And it's giving you more flex, uh, flexibility in the design of the facade from an engineering point of view, and saving a lot of money in the support uh, frames of the, of, the, of the panel. Also gives you extended flexion, improving also the shattering resistance, and you are going to see also the impact resistance in case of hurricane or a catastrophic uh, event. Then if you see a summary of all type of concrete, you can see, okay, High-performance self-compacting concrete, high-strength concrete. You have your formal ultra-high-performance concrete, reinforced with steel fibers. That is normally 150 in this range. Architectural USPC is more or less in the gap between a high-performance concrete and formal USPC, mainly because we reinforce with non-metallic fibers in this case because the architectural purpose. You have aesthetic issues with the corrosion of the fiber in the surface, and the most common fiber use is polyvinyl alcohol. There are some producers using this kind of fibers. In our case, we use alkali resistant glass fiber for our reinforcement. By the way, if you take a USPC matrix reinforced with glass fibers, you remove that one, you replace with steel fiber, you start going in this range of 150. The fiber influence a lot your, your response to the compressive strain of the material. Some of the properties we are already talking about, compressive strain, we are about 126, a flexural strength of the panel. We are talking about 46 megapascal in flexural strength with a, a flexural strength of the matrix around 21 to more or less 16 megapascals. And you have also a tensile strength around nine. Initially, ultra high performance concrete panel don't have any standard to use for the design. And in the beginning, we adopt the fiber cement industry that was the most common a design criteria and is normally by AC90 for the International Building Code. You need to do 
Something important of the mesh, when you incorporate with a well design, you can get a panel that is just six millimeters inch, and you can pass the Miami Dade Huracan impact resistant only with that panel, without any support sheathing or any extra material in here. Another important thing is fire. I don't know if you saw recently in Spain, they had the same problem with aluminum panels, that two buildings completely uh, fire completely uh, because all the, was an aluminum fire uh, facade. The same like at the, tor the tower in, in UK, that also has alu aluminum panel with a, a polymeric uh, core. And that's one of the very important things that why we use also alkali resistant fiber. Some of the polyvinyl fibers can compromise the fire resistance of your facade. That is very important for the safety. What are the building codes that you can use right now for design with this kind of material? You, there are two building codes. I already told you that you can use the fiber cement, the IC90, but normally that is very conservative and is used for material is, as you say, downgrade compared with the high performance code. If you go to international building code, you can see there are two acceptance criteria, the AC458, if a USPC that use polyvinyl alcohol fiber or steel fibers, and it's just testing the material like it's normally do with a normal USPC. This is another criteria that we work in our company because our material, because the reinforcement of the two uh, textile mesh, they have completely different response from the mechanical point of view. And then there is a new acceptance criteria 493. That is also going to include the ports in tall anchors uh, failure. About the anchors, you can see the way that you can anchor your, your panel to the facade. You can take just the panel, you have a hatch channel, and then you have fastener, and then it's just a screw through the panel. And you can see here more or less the, I don't know if you can see, but there are some here. And the main failure here is the panel never fails. It's normally the screw or the hatch channel that is failing in tension or in shear. And this is according to STN E48A standard. That is inside of this acceptance criteria inside of the building code. The another one is something called conceal anchors. It's generally a post post installed anchor in the George PC facade. And you can see that the failure is young a cone. That is, if you review, if you have experience with a post installed anchor in normal concrete, there are several equations that you can calculate that low. But this angle is completely different in ultra high performance concrete compared with normal concrete. There is a lot of work to do to do new model design for this kind of failure in very thin material because this is a shallow anchor. This is normally 10 millimeter in depth and then you get different angle here. Also the mesh reinforce change your cracking behavior. Then you have an angle here and then take the mesh and then extend the load higher. This is very important for the design of the facade because you can see here if you have your USB-C with no fibers, you have this value in load for uh, pulling the anchor out. You add fibers, you have more or less similar for, you only have a little bit post-cracking because the fibers. Then if you just have the mesh, no fibers and the USB-C, you can see you have a jump in that low uh, uh, value. And when you combine with the fiber in the matrix, you get at least 30% increase in the pull-out force. That is very important for the design of the facade. And this is an example of the University of Connecticut that was recently finished last year that you can see no attachment and it looks like a stone uh, uh, wall. How many projects so far ultra high performance concrete has been applied in 475 projects in the US? A little bit more because there are two more companies doing ultra high performance concrete. I would say that this is maybe around 550 more or less with another company. And here in the New Orleans area, there are two projects you are interested to visit. The most recently finished is the Children Hospital here in, in New Orleans. That is a very nice uh, project you are interested. The another one is just a very old project that was a recladding of an old building that they just removed the old facade and they put a new facade in, in using ultra high performance. This is a very quick uh, example of the last project that we did that is the is in, in, in Cambridge, in Boston, in Massachusetts. It's called 325 Vini. This is the new headquarters for the Moderna company. That is very famous recently in the last four years because the COVID vaccine here. And this is more or less the rendering of the building. It's a very complex building. 
And this was designed with all the facade was made with ultra high performance concrete. This is more or less a different shape of the, of the panel made of USPC there. The typical six millimeter panel, just flat, with different textures, different thickness. Inclusive, we, the, 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 the architects and the project manager decide that they want to get baguettes from the same made with USPC. Then you have some baguettes that are in the facade, and some is different shapes and forms of the facade panel. Some example of how how the facade was designed with different combination of the textures and the color. People that is not familiar with facade engineering, I would say that 95% of the application of ultra high performance concrete in, in facade is something called rain screen facade or open joint facade. And this is more or less how is the assembly of the facade. You have your wall assembly and then you have a different framing that you attach your panel with the screws. They can be visible or concealed, and then you attach your, your panel to the facade. Another example how these panels were attached to the facade of this uh, uh, project example that you can see here, the hatch channels and the connections. Something about the aesthetic, that is another thing of architectural ultra high performance concrete. We normally use premium raw materials, then you use white cement, it's normally a little bit more expensive than normal grade cement. Um, we also use a premium pozzolani material because you need to keep the color in time. And color consists in batch to batch. You don't have patch of color in your facade. And we use a lot of different type of pigment. Pigment is a little bit different monster when you combine with ultra high performance concrete. That is another thing that is not typical uh, known. Um, another technological thing that we did for this project is that we have areas of the panel with aggregate and areas without aggregate. And we develop a special technique to do this in a manufacturer continuous way for the, pan for the project. And also panels with angles and face aggregate in, in here. You can see here how the USPC fill the flow of the panel and we get a micro texture that for far away looks like a wood, like a, the, the material is completely made of wood. Something I want to get to reflection is how they do the engineering. And there is a lot of lack of information of using ultra high performance against normal concrete. And this is just an example of how the engineering company are doing the, uh, a technique called RISA that you are more familiar than me. It's a, it's a rapid engineering stress analysis for the facade. And something interesting is there is a lot of assumption they are already for normal concrete, but very fragile material, not for ultra high performance concrete or a material that has some ductility. For example, they assume that your shear is just 30% of the model of rupture. It is not true for this kind of material. This is something that needs to be in, inserted in the codes. Another thing is they use a high safety factor. Normally, they use a safety factor of three. Another one is when they calculate the maximum deflection, again, they are still using numbers they are for a very fragile and stiff material. In this case, uh, L between L, uh, defle maximum deflection between a 360 value. This is a very stiff material without any ductility. Then this needs seen that need to be in, inserted in a modified code. Again, the same about the anchor. The safety factor for anchor is normally more conservative. They use four for the design. And where are this going to be the, the, the distance between any anchor in the facade to calculate? Some finishing products, photos of the, of the building, how is finished right now, you can see the baguettes here, the wood panels, and all the different textures of the facade. How it looks right now, so another part of the facade with the window finishing. Another photo here. Another photo here with the baguettes and the finishing building. And this is very cool because you can see how was the concept and how fi finally was the facade of the building. And the end, but to finalize, I already told you there are more than 475 uh, projects finishing in the US using architectural USPC. We think that this is creating a path for long lasting and resilient buildings. Because another thing is that this, this facade are going to last and design for more than 50 years. Normally, you see a, a building project that is made with fiber cement. Fiber cement normally start to uh, fail after 10 to 15 years because they have a lot of problems with the moisture and resistance to freeze up. Still, there's a lot of work to be done between the codes 
specs and the design guidelines that John effort between everybody. It's going to be the architect, the engineer, the contractor, manufacturer, and a lot of the people here that is doing the regulation and the codes in, in the industry. Well, thank you. Open for questions.